What's good YouTube, LeVar here, I'm back with another NBA 2K25 video. In this video, I'm going to teach you 5 tips to become a better center in 2K25 because a lot of people are struggling a little bit because it's a new game, it's a brand new game, you know what I'm saying, it's a brand new feel, it's a lot of different new builds, you know what I'm saying, a lot of these builds are not as, excuse me, not as OP, you know what I'm saying, 2K been making the build way more strict and less free because I mean, you know 2K won a more realistic and balanced game. That's all they've been trying to get for the last few years. So this is one of one of the probably the most balanced games I've probably come across or the most, it's, it's different. I should say it's different. I ain't gonna say it's balanced because then you know, people gonna come at me in the comments and say, oh, it's not balanced, this, da, 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 da. Let me take my words back. Okay, not balanced, but whatever. Um, I'm not gonna waste our time, but before I get into this, if you feel like you learned something new or if I helped you out, Hit that sub button for me, hit that like button for me, leave a comment. I read all my comments. I get all my comments are hard. You can check every video for proof if you want to. Every comment has a heart. You know what I'm saying? I like to read my comments, you know what I mean? But first tip to become a better center in 2K25, you want to make sure if for, for whatever reason the case may be, I do this mistake all the time, sometimes, and I know exactly what to do to fix it so I don't fumble the possession. But if you for some, for whatever reason jump early on a rebound, you know you jump it early accidentally because you might have you know got a little trigger finger, trigger finger was itching a little bit or something. You know what I mean? All you gotta do is hold your rebound button down if you jump early and you'll still uh, grab the rebound. I mean, obviously if someone else is there and they get a better animation than you, then they might get the rebound. But it basically postpones your jump by you holding the button down. So if you press it down early, you you gotta think quick. So like. I press, I press my, I press Y, but the ball ain't even hit the rim yet. Just hold the button down. Don't let it go. If you hold it down, then the, the jump for the rebound will be delayed, basically, and you'll be able to still jump at the right time when the ball hits the rim and then bounces in the air. This works like 24/7. I've done this for the last, I don't know how many years. I've been doing this for like, I would say like 10 years maybe. This has been a thing since like 2K15, like the first on. That's the first online I played with being a center, you know what I'm saying, on 2K. 2K 15, 16, 17, 18, it literally always works. And it still works this year. So you just basically just hold the rebound button if you jump too early. You're gonna basically delay your jump so that way, even if you made that mistake, it won't really affect you. You still have a good chance to get that rebound. Tip number two, gamble on jump contest. Now this one takes a lot of IQ, I would say. You have to really assume and anticipate really, really well. I don't know how you can actually develop the skills to do that. I just know how to do it because I've been playing 2K for so long. I got a lot of experience, but you basically just have to understand like, oh, this person's definitely gonna shoot this jump shot. And sometimes you might guess wrong. You might gamble wrong. You might be wrong. You know what I'm saying? When you when you feel like, oh, they're gonna shoot that and you go for the jump and then they don't shoot it. I'll be honest, plenty of times I be wrong myself. So it's okay. But when people tell you don't jump or why you jump in, don't listen to that. Cause sometimes you gotta jump. And if you can gamble right, then the jump will be useful and you can get a block. Like earlier, I was playing in the wreck. No, I was playing in the park and I closed down on somebody and I knew he was going to shoot and I jumped and I got a two hand block, bound just like that. You know what I'm saying? It was real tough. I ain't going to lie. I had, to, I had to clip it. I had to clip it. Um, If I can find a clip, I'll show it, but I probably won't be able to find it because I got a lot of clips and stuff. Uh, Tip number three, do not bust out a seven foot three or a seven foot two big man. It is 2024. It is NBA 2K25. You do not need a seven foot three or a seven foot two in this damn rack or in the park. It's gonna be way too slow, bro. You don't need that. I promise you don't need that. You don't wanna go out here with a 40 speed and a 40 agility, moving like a turtle, moving like a snail. You don't wanna do that, bro. If the highest height I would recommend you go to is seven foot one. That is the highest height. Do not go seven two or seven three. You can do exactly what you wanna do without being those heights. I don't see the point in being those heights except you just want to be tall for, 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 for no reason. You want the extra height for no reason. It's not going to benefit you, bro. If you bust out a 7 foot 3 against a 7 foot 1, that 7 foot 1 can very much dominate you. Just because you're 2 inches higher, them little 2 inches are not that drastic in game. If you notice, heights that are very close together are not that drastic. It's not that noticeable. I promise it's not. You literally, you literally are just wasting attributes. You're wasting speed because you're you're making your center seven foot three. The last time I had a seven foot three center was goddamn 2K20, and I ain't gonna lie. Everybody, this that was the first year people started to make smaller big men. I was like one of the last people to make a smaller big man. And even when I made a smaller big man, I still wasn't really rocking with it. 
I think I think that's when I made it six foot eleven. People were starting to rock six elevens and six tens instead of seven threes because they were like, okay, speed actually is pretty good on the center. You can still get rebounds if you know what you're doing on a shorter center. You feel what I'm saying? So yeah, and there's no need to go for seven three seven two. A lot of people be telling me they still making a seven three seven two. Hey, if you really want to do it, go ahead. Hey, I ain't gonna stop you. Nobody else gonna stop you. Do your thing, chicken wing. You feel me? But I'm just letting you know it's a waste. It's no point. All right. Leave that in the past. We down. We we rocking with seven foot one all the way to six seven. You feel me? Obviously not for the red for six seven and six eight and six nine. That's for part. But you feel what I'm saying? You know, obviously six ten eleven, seven foot seven foot one for the red. I don't recommend making a six ten or a six eleven because there's really no point. You might as well just go seven foot seven foot one. They get more attributes. It's just better overall. You can check for yourself if you want, or you can check my my rec build video where I made a seven footer where I, I go in depth explaining why it's no point making a six ten or a six eleven. But back to the topic and discussion. Uh, tip number four for being a, a better center. Excuse me, I keep stuttering. I just had a nine hour stream. I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know if you could tell by my eyes or my voice, but I've been streaming for a long time. I just ended stream and now I'm tired. I wanted to make this video. But tip number four go for a higher speed and agility. Do not make your build super heavy for no reason to the point where your build is just extra slow for no reason. Go as low as you can. But make sure that you don't go too low to the point where you don't get the brick wall you want. Because when you go low on your, your weight to increase your speed and athleticism and your uh, uh, agility, your um your strength goes down. Okay, your strength goes down. You don't want to make your strength go too far down. If you want gold brick wall, you need to make sure your strength is at 91. If you want silver brick wall, you need to make sure it's at least at 83. You don't want to bring your weight too low because you're trying to get speed and agility and then you sacrificing your strength and you becoming a weakling. You don't want to be a weakling. You need to be strong in this game. You're going to need strength. Every attribute matters and strength is definitely one of them that really matters, okay? You definitely need strength in this game. Not even just for brick wall and screens and stuff, but you need it for a whole lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? You need it for a whole bunch of stuff when it comes to like backing down, box out, uh, 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 playing defense, like... When you get an anime, you don't want to get ran over by somebody who's trying to drive on you. You ain't got strength, you're not going to be able to hold your ground. You know what I'm saying? I done seen people get ran ran through on this game. No ditty. But whatever. Also, to get higher speed and agility, you can go as an undersized center. I've always been the one talking about undersized centers because I, like I like to be fast. When you got speed and agility and you're faster than the other center, trust me, you have a way better chance at dominating them than if you were slow just like them. If you are a fast center and you know how to move, you know how to operate your play, you can get to the positions that you need to get to. You know what I'm saying? You can uh, get around other big men. If they get in the position for a rebound and you know you're behind them, you can literally run around them because you're actually fast on your feet. You can do that. So it's definitely a lot of positives for having a higher speed and agility. Don't doubt it. Don't underestimate speed and agility in this game. Look at that block. Oh my God, that block was crazy. Do not underestimate it because it's definitely useful for being a good center. You never know. Just give it a try, okay? And the last tip, this is, should be obvious. This is the most obvious tip. <coughs> abuse the steals in this game, bro. Please abuse the steals. Go for every steal. Spam. Last year and the year before, I literally was the main one saying don't spam for steals because you got three adrenaline bars. And when you lose an adrenaline bar, and if you don't know what an adrenaline bar is, it is those yellow bars at the bottom of your player. It's three of them. Every time you go for a steal attempt or a block attempt, you lose one of them. And when you lose one, you lose a percentage of accomplishing a steal or accomplishing a block. Your percentage of doing either of those things drop drastically each time you lose a bar. I don't remember the percentages, but basically if you have all three of your bars, you have the maximum chance of getting a block or a steal. It don't matter this year for steals. If you got zero bars, you can still grab that steal like it's nothing. The, it's the, the lanes are crazy on this game. The lanes are insane on this game. You can literally intercept anything. My build has like a low steal right now because I'm only at 74 overall. I don't have no VC right now. I need to get paid so I can get some VC. I have no VC, so my, my rec center build right now is a 74. I haven't even upgraded this steal, and I'll be getting steals. Like, even if I got no adrenaline bars, if I got one, if I got two, or if I got all three of them, steals is a mother effort. Like, I'm so serious. You don't have to worry about saving your adrenaline bars. You can, you can literally spam. Everyone spams the steal button. They go for everything. 
they just they don't even try to be patient and try to time it perfectly you don't even have to worry about that you can literally just go for it but but listen though don't go for it too much because then you might get taken out of the play you might get that little animation where you 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 going for the steal and you miss it or they didn't throw the ball and then it drags you all the way across the court you don't want those animations so when i say spam it i mean like don't hesitate to go for it still like if you think you, you think about the pass it go for it don't hesitate just go for it abuse them steals bro but don't do it too too much and then you get taken out of the play because you're going crazy on that button you don't want to get taken out the play and you know us centers are already slow as shit compared to the rest of these players so you once you get taken out of the play it's ggs it's gonna take you a minute to get back to the person you guarded and they probably gonna get a wide open shot or a wide open cut to the basket easy dunk you feel what i'm saying but that's pretty much it that's my five tips uh i might do more obviously some of these tips might be obvious to some of you i don't need you to comment oh these are all obvious i don't need you to tell me that it's not obvious for everyone. Not everyone's a pro, okay? Not everyone is a pro at this game. I don't make these videos for all the pros. This is for people who just wants to know more ways to be better at center that they might not know before, okay? Cut me some slack, all right? If you think these are obvious, I'll get you some more. I'll do five more tips in another video. I got videos coming on the way, how to get more rebounds, how to get more blocks, how to set better screens, all of that good stuff. I got y'all. Make sure you leave a like, sub up, turn the post notice on because I be streaming. And I need you to get these notices when I go live on this channel so you can see me use these tips in action. You feel what I'm saying? I appreciate you for watching. Go ahead and leave a comment. I'll read your comment. I'll heart it. I'll, I'll reply maybe even. Um, I appreciate you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.